Hello, Balmy Badger Army. Hey, Badger Army. How's it going? Today, we are going to be talking about beards, beard grooming, and whatever else comes to our mind, because we're mad. That was basically what the conversation was just before he pressed play. Apart from the mad bit, because no one really admits to that. In eccentric. But yes, how is everyone today? Don't forget to comment in the comments and let us know how your day's going and how you have been, Badger Army. We love you all to bits and we want to make sure you're okay. So don't forget to say hi. So Nick, what are your experiences with beard grooming and things like that? Let us know. Well, I started growing a beard, um, well, I've always kind of like had lots of bits of facial hair. Yes, I mean, me I, too. I had, I had a moustache. Really? In, in school. Oh, really? In yeah, school? Yeah, I had kind of like, well, not not like this, obviously. But no. Kind of like you notice that you've got kind of like bits of hair and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I mean, I was my my dad has a full beard, mm. and when I was growing up, I was like, I want a beard. Yes, my I son's was like that up as well. Thinking beards are awesome, and I want to grow one. Yeah, my son's like that. He always asks about daddy's beard, and you know, it, he he asks me to make it soft. He doesn't like it when it's all bristly and hurts anyway. And to be honest, neither do I. So it's, I do it's make sure hurt it's if he all right. starts pulling it. Yeah, it does. Trust me, it's happened once. It, uh, uh, he thought it'd be funny, and it hurt like heck. Trust me, it wasn't good. But yeah, um, I use beard oil, and I get it trimmed every couple of months. I need to like use that. that stuff a lot more. Yes, you definitely need mine, to use some beard mine oil. Just can't, mine kind of ends up being quite messy. It's a bit like my hair. It kind of it does. It's it's all like grows deadly straight okay you know it doesn't curl or anything like that mm. so it's so yeah i suppose i suppose i kind of like it wasn't quite as out of control as it could could have okay been. but um but yeah i mean i i mean i start for a while i just had like that bit okay i grew like that for a while i mean when, yeah. I, was, when I was living in france um as for my year abroad at university okay uh, that was when i first started to grow it simply because my parents were not around to tell me to shave well, indeed yes so, everyone goes through that yes, stage was, don't they where I they have like a bit of an opportunity to do in time yeah um, definitely so yeah so i just kind of like stopped doing it i mean i didn't mm. i didn't really properly wet shave until my okay. early 20s really because so, you grew a beard quite early then yeah whereas um, yeah with me i was like really itching to grow a beard and it was like as soon as i got to college that was it i grew a beard and it and i didn't you know back in the early 90s and stuff there wasn't really a thing of beard grooming really so it was just quite wild and things like that now i try and keep it quite neat as much as possible unless I'm growing it out of course yeah I need to do that more mm. so so but yeah the toughest thing for me uh, ironically was the easiest thing for you I could never grow a moustache and that's why I very rarely trim my moustache because mm. for some reason it doesn't really grow around here whereas everything else really does uh, but going back to what we were saying about beard oil I use that brisk have you heard of that one I've not no yeah so that's one to walk down on Brisk beard oil is really good. And you don't need loads and loads. Like, uh, just put it on the different areas that are itching. I also use like a good quality shampoo and conditioner on my beard as well. Not a lot of people know that because I hear people say, oh no, I, I shaved my beard off. It was really cool and I loved it, but it was really itchy. And I said, well, you know, the reason why it's itchy is because it just needs a good quality shampoo and conditioner every now and again. Treat it like your hair on your head, pretty much. That's, that's, that's good advice there. So yeah, so 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 kind of like I, I kind of grew it out for a few years. Mm. Um, then I had like just this for for a while, okay, which I quite liked. And then when I when I began teaching, uh, shaving sort of like dropped off the priority. Oh, okay, me. yes, yes. So I was just like, to hell with it, I'm gonna grow a bit. So I had I had it like this for for a while, mm. um, and in the last couple of years, I've been trying to grow these bits out, okay, to into kind of like more of more mm. of a full a uh, a full beard. Full beard, yeah. See, I have those bits, and they're really annoying, so I wouldn't rush for those because they always don't look matching up. But yes, for a while, when I when I first started work, like I was saying, the instant, the first thing I did was grow a beard, and then I changed it up a bit, because I was known as like a noddy holder and, and all that sort of thing, Farmer Giles, because the first thing I did was grow all this out, and then just have a massive line there. So I just had like massive, massive mutton chops. <laughs> and that was a, a bit of a fashion for me for a good few years, actually. I, I had these massive, great big mutton chops, you know, which I was rather proud of. <laughs> because back then, like I was saying, there was no real beard grooming as such, you yeah. know. Yeah. It was either you had a massive beard or you, you didn't really. Yeah. You know, or, or different grades of shaving. 
you know, it was not anything about shaping it, making it look nice. I mean, I go to the uh, Turkish barber shop at least every couple of months now, getting it done quite nicely. It costs about a tenner. So, I mean, these things, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either, you know. And uh, a bit of grooming. The boss does it for me occasionally as well. So, yeah, I definitely think, yeah, I think yours is quite good. I mean, mine's really weird because my hair is naturally brown, but my beard is like ginger and blonde mm. which is rather unusual but it's a one in a god knows how many chance which is pretty cool so what was your feelings when you had a moustache like did you used to think how did that make you feel as a young teenager was it like oh yeah i'm really cool no it was just something else for stu other other people's to laugh at really i couldn't see that's unusual right back then. Oh, okay well so. to be honest i think it's really cool like if you see someone with a really nice mustache now and they oh yeah that's really cool and you compliment people on yeah. beards and, it's kind of like and their facial hair so I think yeah the world's definitely changed nick yeah uh, definitely beards are, changed beards are things that um they they you know every, everyone like it's that think pe people have been writing them off for the last few that's years that's right yeah but it's you back know, it's in like, but yeah, it just kind of like sticks around. It's yeah. just like people people try and like bad mouth beards, but mm. you know we just don't get rid of them. No, you know I think it's come into big fashion now because um, a while back you know you had like Triple H uh, and like Brock Lesnar and some of the UFC fighters, Sheamus as well, another WWE star. So it's like a lot of the manly men were having it uh, beards and they were growing it as like a symbol of you know. I don't know, like toughness in a way, I think. And I think that's where almost it sort of exploded again. Everyone's like, oh, yes, I've got a beard and I'm manly. And I think the people who are, people who badmouth beards are the people who can't grow them. Oh! Because the, th the thing is, I mean, I used to think it must be really hard work being clean shaven. It is. You know? It then, is. Yeah. But then I have a lot, of my, a lot of my friends who are clean shaven are just like, I can't grow a beard. Just like nothing Really? Happens. Really? So, yeah, okay. It's, it's really weird. I mean, the thi I mean, the thing is, I mean, I don't have a lot of chest hair. No, okay. I've never spurted a lot of chest hair. Whereas I'm like a grizzly bear, but we won't there go into you go. that. Um, so, but you know, I've had no problem growing it here. So it's so it's kind of like you know, hair grows in like different places on different guys. Yes, very interesting. Yeah, so, well, let's not go into that too much. So yeah, but yeah, but, it's interesting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it, it's kind, of, it's so. So yeah, I mean the thing the thing with beard, beards is you know they've been said to kind of like go out of fashion and then mm. come back into fashion. That's but the right. The thing is, either way, guys with beards who like their beards don't get rid of them. Exactly. I mean the most I'll do is trim it down. I think now I, I'm used to it, and I think it's really bizarre. Like, what is even under there anymore? I don't even want to know. So basically, I don't think that you know once you start growing a beard, I think having a naked face, having a fresh face, would be rather weird. So. You know, we yeah. won't do that. I've shaved off my beard, I think it's like twice in the last eight years. Really? And okay. It, it just grows back. And it just kind of gets to the stage where I just like, I genuinely can't be bothered to, <laughs> to, do, to do that anymore. Yeah. So. I think, yeah, but having a nice facial massage and things like that, you should always look after yourself like that. It's very nice to be pampered. I wouldn't get rid of it all. But yes, um, when I used to shave a lot, a lot of people used to say, oh, yeah, use shaving foam, things like that. Often used to find it used to clog the razor and make all... It does. Yeah, horrible stuff. So, you know, after a while, I was just using, like, normal soap. And that actually works better. Just a little bit of normal soap on the skin, as long as it's a good quality one. Just with don't tell the makers moisturizing. of Dove. Indeed, just don't tell the makers of... But <laughs> Dove, yeah, Dove, you know, better than soap, better than soap and water any day. It really that's, is. That's me showing my age there. That's like a really old commercial. That's like a really old commercial. But yeah, no, I just think that it's it's good to have that sort of thing. Different options. Look up what's better for your skin. I've never had a cut throat razor shave. Have you? Um, I've sort of done it a couple of times. Okay. I mean, I, I when it, I used to have times where I would I would basically end up nearly cutting my own throat, and I had to yeah. put like plasters on. Ugh. So basically, I would be turning up for work the next day, and people were asking me if I'd if I'd been like attacked by a vampire or something. Okay. Yes. Particularly at one point, I put the wrong kind of plaster on. I put oh like a, dear. It was like designed to be a nail plaster. Okay. Um, so yeah, I had kind of like 
yeah, just blood everywhere. Gosh. So, so yeah, basically, I had I looked a bit like a murder scene. <laughs> so, so yeah, not, oh, not a good look. Not a good, not a good look, look. Even at a Halloween party, it's not an ideal. No, look. not an ideal look. So yeah, just basically look after yourselves and and watch yourself. Uh, a good skincare to- routine is always good as well. I mean, every night. I use um, this new product that the boss got actually called uh, Drops of Youth. All right. And uh, from the be- the body shop, and that's really good. Just like I know it's you know it's not nowadays. It's not really a passe thing. But in the uh, early two thousands and nineties, it was like oh use moisturizer. Don't be stupid. Yeah. Now I think it's just as important for men to look after themselves as it is women, and I think it's important to feel fresh and and happy and. And, and, all, and, and feel clean and things like that in the mornings and, and during the day anyway. So why you would, I don't know, poo-poo that, I don't really understand. But It's it's time to get rid of this whole toxic masculinity thing. That's right, yes. You know, you know and uh, I mean, we've been talking about kind of like overly manly men and stuff like that, you mm. know. You know, it's like, I've got a beard. I'm manly enough. <laughs> hey, yes. And I'm also manly enough to... Do, to make sure that it's in good shape. Exactly, yes. Look after yourselves. Exactly. Indeed, right. Um, well, I think that's all it for the beards aspect of today's yeah. show. And um, we would like to talk about some current news. Uh, what happened this morning, Nick? Tell well, us. Well, of course, sadly, it was announced that Stephen Hawking had passed away. Which is very upsetting. It, it is sad. But remember, he was in the early 60s, he was given two years to live. Really? Okay. Yeah, he, was given two, he was given two years to live. And, you know, fast forward... 50, 50 plus years. In age, yeah. You know? So he's done great yeah. then, hasn't so, he? Yeah. You know, a, a truly remarkable man. A you real know? shock. And, and really against against the odds. Indeed, yeah. And he's so. done so well and his family have obviously done so well and he's done so much for science and yeah. and life and, and people's attitude to different things and he's opened people's eyes up to knowledge that we would never have realised. Exactly. So it's great. You know, so be, in, be inspired. Indeed, yeah. Check out what he's done and see, you know, and read up on it and hopefully it can inspire you. I mean, uh, our good friend of the show, Savage Dragoon, has been talking about positive mental attitude and exactly. keeping yourself happy. And that's what uh, we try and endorse with this series as well. Indeed, that's what we try and endorse with this series as well because, you know, teamwork makes the dreams work. It does. And that's what it's all about. So, yeah, guys, make sure you're happy. Keep yourself well in check. Look after yourselves and be happy and love yourself because if you can't love yourself how are you going to love anyone else eh, Nick? It's, it's true and there's also a thing, thing to say of don't cry because it's over smile because it happened exactly you know? that's not you a know, bad if, idea I've if, never if, heard um, that one but that's a good thought Nick. and you know particularly with uh, with someone like with someone like Stephen Hawking you know yes. it's sad that he's passed away but you know look at how much he achieved exactly that's you a know? great idea that's, Nick. that's the you know that is how to you know that you know that's that's a good example of uh, living your life. You that's know? true. Yeah, getting yeah, out there and true. doing stuff. And that's a good uh, sort of metaphor for every celebrity. I think that everyone loves that uh, has passed away. I mean, the past few years we've had so many popular celebrities from the 70s and early 80s, and sometimes even the 90s that have yeah. died. You know, I, I was really upset when the guy from Bodger and Badger died. You know, yes, that was one of my know, cult favourites. Yeah, one of. Yeah, we both watched that uh, on CBBC growing up. That's most definitely, yeah, and probably some of the inspiration for this show. Yep. So, you know, it just made me feel really upset when I found out he had died. Because I thought, you know, it was just so much, so much, I don't know, childhood innocence in that show. Yeah. There was so much silly fun. And I think, you know, you want to think that these people on TV are immortal, but they're not. And like you were saying, you have to enjoy the aspect of the feelings that they gave you and enjoy the fun and games while it lasted and put that in a nice memory for yourself rather than Absolutely. remembering bad things. Absolutely. That's great. So yes, remember guys, practice mindfulness if you think it's needed. Five minutes a day, breathing exercises. Uh, look after your facial, look after yourself. You know, make sure you're a happy person in the mornings before you leave work. I think it's a good thing. Try and get there to near as there as possible, I think. And uh, any other advice for today, Nick? Uh, I think we've we've covered most of it, but you know, what's more to say except make your day count. Exactly, that's it. Get stuff done is the appropriate term, I guess. Because basically, it's like one of these things where it's like I had a metaphor the other day. I was quite down, and um, you know, we've survived the YouTube apocalypse. We got through it all. We got to a thousand subscriber 
uh, milestone. We've done so much on the channel. We've done so much in our lives. Work hard and that, play hard and all that business. And we've done a lot for you guys. And I really appreciate the community. You guys have been awesome. We've been working hard on that. But, you know, I just felt really down the other day. But then a friend of mine chatted to me and I've been risen back up. So, you know, just make sure you keep in contact with people. It's National Communication Week soon as well, Nick. Ooh. So just make sure you guys talk to each other, you look after each other, and make sure you're there for your friends. And, and on the subject of, talk, of talking and talking, if you listen to uh, Phoenix FM tonight from 8 p.m., where, right. you where you'll be able to listen to my interview with this gentleman. Indeed, thank you very much, Nick. And also, speaking on that, we'll be doing a great more interviews, and I really enjoyed appearing on the show, Nick, as well. Mm -hmm. And also, we'll be doing a live stream of Fallout 4 on Saturday, and hopefully it's going to be a really special one. Really looking forward to that. It's going to be a long stream, hopefully. And it's going to be lots of fun. I'm really looking forward to engaging with you guys and having a real hoot. That's going to be so much fun. And hopefully, we are going to, on Friday night, start Outlast, which is the uh, scary horror game. And it's pretty one of the most scariest horror games ever made. And basically, you are a reporter trying to uncover a severely horrific mystery and you go into there and the what you don't realize is that the inmates are still in the asylum and you can imagine how that goes watch on friday night typical tomorrow. reporters poking their noses where they shouldn't well indeed yes he gets himself in a lot of bother but you'll have to watch and find out nick sounds like it so yes 8 p.m tonight uh, on phoenixfm.com 98 fm if you're in essex indeed uh, yes. you'll be out is uh, when uh, the interview will be going out on tonight's curveballs. It will be up on the uh, Phoenix FM website. Very um, cool. Some point afterwards. We don't know exactly when yet. So, if you can't if you can't wait that long, make sure that you're watching between that you're listening in between eight and ten tonight on PhoenixFM.com. Indeed. And on that note, I will let you guys go. And it's been a fantastic time. Thank you very much for joining me once again, Nick. Pleasure as always. Indeed. Bye for now, Barmy Badger Army. Bye. See you later on, guys. Look after yourselves. Bye.